I'd never heard of the brand before, but it was cheap and I needed one. I assumed they were all made in the same Chinese factory anyway. It was shrink-wrapped to protect the screen and had no manual, but something about it appealed to me. It seemed different somehow. I told the staff I wanted it. They put it on a rolling cart and carried it out to my car. Unfortunately, I didn't notice the strange inputs on the back until I got home. Then I understood why it was so cheap compared to the others they had with the same screen size. It was probably a store return from someone who didn't know what to do with it. I figured the odd ports were for a newer technology I wasn't familiar with. Instead of returning it like the previous owner had, I made a mental note to take a photo of the back panel. If I could find the correct adapters to hook it up to my older AV system, I'd be way ahead of the tech curve. That was always the problem with new electronics. They changed connectors. To my amazement, there was programming on the screen, even though I hadn't set the Wi-Fi up yet. I wasn't sure if I was pulling in local, on-air free broadcasts, or if it had somehow set itself up automatically. If so, that was a bit alarming. I hadn't entered my password or login credentials. I just pressed the power button and it was instantly up and running. Doing the setup is always a pain on new devices, so it was an unexpected perk to avoid the headache. But I was still freaked out that it could do all that without my help. Did the new TV communicate with my modem and router to bypass the security protocols? If so, how did my internet equipment know the monitor was okay to communicate with? My head swam with crazy theories. Perhaps it was so advanced that all of my devices were already in full communication when I carried it into the house. If my internet firewall recognized the phone in my pocket as me, it might have sensed it was okay to trust the new device since I brought it in. Amazing. I didn't have much time to dwell on it though. The programming on every channel was beyond strange. It was like nothing I'd ever seen. It certainly wasn't local public broadcasts. That much was for certain. While flipping through the myriad of choices, I failed to find anything even remotely familiar or recognizable. I stopped trying to explain where the bizarre content came from anymore. That was irrelevant. The disturbing visuals on the screen continued to come, and they filled me with a deepening sense of dread which I couldn't shake. It was as hypnotizing as it was mortifying. For lack of a better term, I was glued to a consuming parade of personal train wrecks and humanitarian catastrophes. The footage on every channel was like the faces of death, non-stop reality programming. The gritty visuals were painful to watch, yet I couldn't force myself to avert my eyes. Even when I mustered the strength to turn the channel, it was just more of the same grisly violence and carnal gore. War, suicides, automobile accidents, natural disasters, wild animal attacks, executions. It was all there to witness in vivid, blood-red color. It was an ugly collection of concentrated pain. There weren't any commercials or station breaks. There were no network watermarks on the side of the screen either. It was awkward and surreal. Channel after channel of inhumane atrocities flashed in front of my unblinking eyes and leached into my brain like a deadly drug. It was a constant stream of raw negativity that I wanted to recoil in horror from, but couldn't. Somehow, I managed to look down at my watch and did a double take. At first, I assumed it was broken, but I looked past the flickering carnage and saw the unmistakable darkness outside my window. Six hours of my life 
had simply evaporated. I'd been entranced by bloody mayhem and unapologetic violence to the exclusion of all else shown in every shade of the rainbow. The shock of lost time was enough to temporarily break the hold it had on me. I reached for the remote to shut it off. I had to act fast before I was reluctantly drawn back into the addictive oblivion of the mystery footage. I pressed the power button. Nothing. The visceral bloodletting continued on, unabated. I set the remote down. They always provide those cheap, no-name batteries that are almost dead when you get them. I had to turn the TV off, manually. Another four hours transpired in zombified trance. My eyes watered and my throat grew parched. I'd witnessed more evil and unnatural death that a person should see in twenty jaded lifetimes. I leaned forward and pressed the physical button on the front bezel. It, too, failed to shut off the unit. Part of me didn't care at all. I didn't mind if I never ate again, or if I watched it all day and lost my job. I was transfixed on the eternal glow of the 50-inch screen in front of me, with an unknown broadcast source. With the remote and manual button not working, I struggled to get up and unplug it from the wall. It wasn't easy to tear myself away from it, but I felt as if the constant stream of dark atrocities was physically draining me of life. To my dismay, the plug wouldn't come out of the socket. A closer inspection of the receptacle and power cord revealed they had melted into an organic-looking solid connection. Stranger than that, all of my HDMI and AV cables were also joined with the unknown ports at the back of the unit. It was like vines genetically spliced to their mates. I couldn't begin to explain the unnatural technology fusion that had occurred, but my new flat panel didn't want to be disconnected. That much was obvious. It was some kind of life form, and it was feeding off my bewitched attention. Like a hard slap on the face, realizing the depth of what was going on served as a much needed sobering influence. It did no good to tug on the cords. They were permanently fused together. Knowing that all living creatures have defense mechanisms in place to protect them from harm, I didn't waste time trying to sever the cords or cables with a knife or scissors. That would probably result in some serious retaliation on its part. I had no idea what it could or couldn't do, but I wasn't taking any unnecessary chances. It had already managed to hypnotize me for 12 hours straight while I neither ate, drank or slept. It had a deeply powerful sense of attraction. I went to do an on- I went to do an internet search about it. I figured there would be others who experienced this dark phenomenon. That's when I noticed my laptop looked very strange. There was something odd about it which I couldn't place. It looked shinier than before. As a matter of fact, it looked newer than new. It positively glowed on my desk. I went to wake it up, but stopped myself at the last second. Instead, I crouched down and looked behind the desk at the outlet it was plugged into. I couldn't believe it. The damn thing was fused to the wall receptacle just like the new flat panel downstairs. Somehow, it had infected my computer too. I raced upstairs to inspect the bedroom TV. It was permanently fused together 
and the screen displayed the same cavalcade of depressing carnage. All throughout my house, every piece of electronics and appliances I owned was physically joined to a power source. Even the toaster was connected. I had an old tube TV in the basement. It still worked, but it was so outdated that I just stored it on a pile of unusual things until I could haul it to the dump. I was curious to see if it was untouched. On the wall, there was a foreign electrical tether extended from a nearby outlet and stretched across the floor like an ambitious vine. It slowly snaked its way toward the old TV to complete the circuit. As soon as the umbilicus could reach the power cord, it would be fused too. To say I was in a crisis would be an understatement. Some creepy alien entity was slowly taking over my home. I'd brought it inside, just like an electronic Trojan horse. The unit at the salvage store was basically just a disguised seed. Like a fool, I carried it home and planted it. I wanted to call the store to warn them or summon the police to witness the creepy invasion I had triggered. But even my home phone was fused to the jack. My cell was almost dead too, but I couldn't very well plug it up to recharge it. I tossed it down in disgust and grabbed my car keys. I had to get out of the house before the TV, stereo or my computer lured me back to the zombified trance I'd narrowly detached from. Predictably, my escape was interrupted. In the hallway, by my front door, was the main household fuse panel. Its door was wide open. Sticking out of it was a large 220 volt electrical line that certainly didn't exist before. I tried to imagine what the electrical entity was trying to merge with now. The dryer was in another part of the house, and I couldn't think of anything else that used a power line that thick. Then, the chilling reality dawned on me. This unnatural tether was intended to fuse with me. I backed up slowly and sought another escape route out of the house. In desperation, I ended up climbing out of a window. At that point, I was running on pure instinct. I didn't even think of all the electrical lines in my car. I just got in and turned the key. My doors locked on me and the radio started blaring. It started playing the most caustic, malevolent music I'd ever heard. I tried to open the door, but the handle wouldn't work and my seatbelt had me fully restrained. My mind fought, but the music started drawing me in. The vicious pattern of the rhythms and the blast beats started to be more appealing. With each passing moment, I resisted less and was starting to enjoy the sonic brutality. Just like the deadly influx of carbon monoxide into the bloodstream, I was rapidly being taken over by the influence of it. Every passing moment made it exponentially harder to fight. In a final act of resistance, I shouted above the din of the death metal and reached for my pocket knife. I sliced the seatbelt strap and managed to get out of it. The heat came on inside the car. It was already a hot summer day, and when the windows rolled up, the inside temperature was well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Sweat boiled out of my pores and down my face. The unknown electrical-based organism was punishing me for resisting it. The window switch wouldn't work either, but I had another emergency solution. I jammed my knife savagely into the canvas of the convertible top and sliced hard. I managed to escape my would-be tomb via internal caesarean section. I don't know how far the infection has spread beyond my house, 
but I've managed to find an uninfected computer in an internet cafe downtown. I must hurry and detail the horrors of this bizarre epidemic and warn the unsuspecting public before it's too late for all of us. I believe this horrific thing can be defeated, but the easiest way is just to avoid the infection in the first place. Be careful what you buy and plug into your home. Time is of the essence. I'm asking for some brave volunteers to go back with me to my home and torch the place before it spreads to an area that can't easily be contained. So, who's with me in this deadly mission? <laughs>